Our friends at Sky News Australia wanted me to ask you this. <laughs> Our friends at Sky News Australia wanted me to ask you this. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. And that's former Brexiteer Nigel Farage setting up Donald Trump with a question for the ages. And what a triumph it was, with the GB News host delivering News Corp a king hit on arch-villain Kevin Rudd, with days of coverage across its many platforms. Nasty Kev gets trumped. Stars and gripes. Light bulb moment. Trump opens fire on Nasty Rudd. Trump has Nasty Kevin Rudd right where he wants him. Or should that be Murdoch has Kevin Rudd right where he wants him? Because this story was sweet revenge on the former PM turned News Corp critic. And it was all set up by Sky News in Sydney, as Nigel Farage happily admitted. And our friends at Sky News Australia wanted me to ask you this. Good friends indeed, because GB News is run by Angelo Frangiopoulos, who built Sky News Australia. So, what was the question? And how was the ex-pres primed to give the right answer? First, Trump was given the background. But now, of course, things have changed in Australia. We've got a Labour government in Australia. Now they've appointed Kevin Rudd. And then he was fed with some choice Rudd quotes, so he had something to bite on. He has said the most horrible things. You're a, destruct you a destructive president, a traitor to the West. And he's now Australia's ambassador in Washington. Yeah, well, I don't know. Would you take, would you take a phone call he from won't, him? He won't be there long if that's the case. I don't know much about him. Surely a crucial admission. I don't know much about him. But when did facts ever stop Trump from a colourful outburst? Uh, I heard he was a little bit nasty. Uh, I hear he's not the brightest bulb, uh, but I don't know much about him. But if, uh, if he's at all hostile, he will not be there long. Gotcha. Trump's spray on Rudd was teased on Sky News Wednesday morning. To air for the first time in Australia on Sky News, Donald Trump says Kevin Rudd won't last long if he's re-elected. And soon enough, it was the dominant political story. The ABC calling it a withering attack, crossing to its Washington correspondent shortly after Sky released its clip. Barbara, good morning. What did Donald Trump say? The ABC even staking out the Australian embassy to get footage of Rudd emerging in a car and running the story in all of its 7pm bulletins where it was the lead item in New South Wales and the ACT. Donald, Donald Trump has insulted Australia's, Australia's ambassador, ambassador to the Kevin United Rudd, States, Kevin describing Rudd, him calling as him not, not the brightest, brightest bulb. bulb. And on the commercial networks and SBS, the Trump spray was also being pumped up. And was there any context given about the Farage question or the motivation for Sky News to ensure it was asked? No, there was not. And in the meantime, Sky News commentators were giddy with joy running the Trump clip on every nighttime program from 5 p.m. until midnight. And I love it, it's vintage Trump. Calls him nasty, says he's not the brightest bulb. But boy, I think that Trump absolutely scored a bullseye with this. Rudd really is a megalomaniacal blowhard with a big mouth who once again has talked himself into strife. It was seven hours of pure delight. But Sherry Markson then let the cat out of the bag. Well, I can reveal that Rudd is furious about it and is blaming us here at Sky News for sending Nigel Farage that question. Well, Rudd can't expect us not to ask Trump about these comments when Rudd spent years calling for a royal commission into our company and endlessly criticised our public interest journalism. And that he did, with Rudd branding Murdoch a cancer on democracy and calling for a royal commission and saying in 2020... One thing we've also learned about Murdoch is that he runs his operation a bit like a mafioso operation with threats and intimidation to anybody who challenges it, including me. As we've just seen, and Markson admitted. But it's one thing for Sky News to indulge in its orchestrated slapdown of Rudd. It's another for the rest of the media to cheer it on. Mark Kenny, a former press gallery reporter and now academic, called the Farage interview... A low-grade exchange between two people in no position to judge others. While Rachel Withers, editor of news site The Politics, said... The media leapt on it, buying into the ridiculous suggestion that Rudd should step down because Trump said so. Next day, it was the role of former Liberal senator and ambassador to the UK, George Brandis, to make a series of obvious points that journalists had missed. Telling RM Breakfast... Donald Trump is you know, infamous for... Um, uh, making rather you know, wild and, and off-the-cuff claims that don't, in the end, amount to very much. 
And saying of the interviewer... I know Nigel Farage. He's a, he's a charming charlatan. While defending Rudd's record in Washington and concluding... I don't think there is sufficient reason to believe on the basis of a few throwaway remarks to Nigel Farage that there is a deep problem here. And credit to Peter Hutch's analysis in the Nine Papers, which provided some important context on Trump's glorious history of personal insults. Trump denounced the Pope as disgraceful and predicted the Vatican would be attacked by the terrorist army of Islamic State a year and a half later, Trump said Francis was really wonderful, a great guy. And a footnote, if you're surprised that Donald Trump doesn't instantly know who our US ambassador is, take a peek at this exchange between Scott Morrison and President Trump from 2018. That's right, Joe Hockey, a great athlete, is the guy, just like Kevin Rudd. But now, to a Seven News credit card, two Thai masseuses and a TV sacking. And like so many grubby stories involving tabloid news, it starts with an infamous tell-all exclusive. Bruce? Liam, good morning. You ready? Let's light some fires. That is former Liberal staffer Bruce Lerman sitting down with Liam Bartlett last June on Seven Spotlight, eight months after his trial for the rape of Brittany Higgins was abandoned. And the fires he lit are still leaving victims. With one of those who landed the Spotlight interview, the latest to be burnt, thanks to this explosive story last Friday from Sam Maiden. Seven credit card used to book $1,000 time masseuse for Bruce Lerman. Two Thai masseuses were booked, one for Mr Lerman and another for a Seven employee, while the pair engaged in negotiations over the exclusive interview. That was all on a boys' night out in November 2022, which was followed soon after by text messages between the Spotlight producer and a colleague discussing how to reverse the charges, presumably to cover up the incident and the credit card misuse, with Maiden reporting... The total amount paid in one night for Mr Lerman and the seven staffer appears on the Spotlight credit card as $2,940 in multiple transactions of $1,000. The seven producer was not named, but it was reported he was disciplined, paid the money back and was no longer with the network. But attempts to keep his name out of the news did not last long, with Kate McClymont reporting in the Sydney Morning Herald that his name is Taylor Auerbach. And it's not the first time that he has hit the headlines. Four years ago, photos of Auerbach in a steamy clinch with Sephora Malka, formerly known as model Kate Fisher, surfaced briefly online and then in the Daily Telegraph, with Malka saying he was chasing me for a story and a sit-down interview. Despite those revelations, Auerbach had remained at the network. And back in 2018, as a reporter on A Current Affair, Auerbach had played a starring role on Media Watch. Our exclusive with the mum King hit in a brutal road rage attack on a busy road. Trash bag, that's what I'd call him. With Auerbach serving up a sympathetic interview with the female victim of a road rage incident and laying all the blame on the male driver. I had to do what I had to do to protect me and my mate and her son. Only for a court to reveal that she was the guilty party and a current affair had been taken for a ride. And two years before that, Auerbach also featured on Media Watch with this story in the Courier Mail. Meet the Queensland politician's Sharia Sheila, who says... The burkas are better with a bikini wax. With his story, which also ran in the telly, claiming... The coalition government has hired a buxom and bubbly swimsuit model to research Sharia law as a policy advisor to backbencher George Christensen. And was that true? No, it was not. Turns out a 27-year-old woman called Tamara Candy had been hired by Christensen for five days to do some research six months earlier. And uh, was she a Sharia law expert? No, she was not. So, this was Auerbach's pedigree when he was hired by Spotlight. And when Seven eventually let him go, nine months after treating himself and allegedly Lerman to a rub on company money, he was given a glowing reference by Seven and snapped up by Sky News to be its investigations producer. But on Saturday, we were told by Kate McClymont that he is now out of a job. Sky News Australia staffer sacked amid fallout from controversial New South Wales police hiring. Which was confirmed in an email to MediaWatch from Sky News. 
Taylor Auerbach is no longer employed by Sky News Australia. But what is this about a controversial police hiring? Well, here is where it gets messy, because the man who suggested Auerbach reverse the credit card transactions for the Thai masseuses back in November 2022 and offer to... Pay cash instead. ..was his then friend and fellow Spotlight producer, Steve Jackson, who has caused a stir by landing the top PR job with the New South Wales Police Commissioner. Seven News understands Spotlight producer Steve Jackson was suggested by the Police Minister's office. He was then hand-picked to be the Commissioner's top media advisor. But now Mr Jackson is unlikely to ever see his first day in the job. We'll see how that pans out. And why has Steve Jackson been pulled into the maelstrom? Well, as the Herald reported... Auerbach is widely known to be backgrounding media outlets about Jackson. Ouch. With the Herald suggesting it was due to a bitter falling out between the two men that can be traced back to the Lerman interview. We put a series of questions to Jackson and Auerbach, asking if they wished to comment, but both declined. Then, late this afternoon, Auerbach decided to front the media to say... Last week, various stories and rumours emerged about Mr Jackson and me and events allegedly involving the pair of us. And I can sum much of it up as gossip. And read the masseuse... Mr Lerriman very quickly issued a denial about the story, saying, and I quote, it's, it's an untrue and bizarre story from a disgruntled ex-Network 7 producer. I would like to make it abundantly clear that I reject Mr Lerriman's accusations. Make of that what you will. As for Bruce Lerman, who has not been convicted of rape and vows he is innocent, he told The Australian that he did meet with network producers in Sydney that night, but did not get a massage, adding... Network 7 have only ever covered reasonable travel for filming and accommodation. Except, as we later discovered, it was a lot more than assisting with accommodation. Today, Lerriman was asked about his own tell-all with the Seven News Spotlight program, revealing his rent has been paid for a year in exchange for the so-called scoop. With Seven handing Lerman a benefit worth at least $100,000. That revelation saw Spotlight's interview dropped from the shortlist for the Walkley Awards Scoop of the Year. But amid all the payments, denials and attempted cover-ups, what else has changed? We asked Seven if Spotlight had changed the methods used to grab its exclusives. They told us... Your question is absurd. There is no method. As stated, it was a personal misuse of the card, immediately admitted to and paid for personally. Meanwhile, stay tuned for the next episode in this long-running saga in which Justice Michael Lee will hand down his verdict in Lerman's defamation case against Network 10 and Lisa Wilkinson. That is due on the 4th of April. We will be watching. And finally, to Hobart, but not to the election, something far more pressing. Last weekend, sports fans watching ABC 7pm News were scratching their heads when the AFL weekend roundup came on. And a sign that things were awry was with the teams playing in the first match. Well, the Blues couldn't get their hands on the ball. The Ds were eagerly notching up behinds. Despite having only one fit player on the bench in the final term, Melbourne prevailed after the most dramatic of finishes. Touch ball. Oh. Nail-biting stuff. Problem was, Melbourne did not play Carlton. They played the Western Bulldogs a week ago and won by a lot. Next up was the result between St Kilda and North Melbourne, only that is not the Saints' current coach. Everything seemed to be going North's way. But I don't think that's been touched by anybody. A seven-goal first quarter set the tone for the Kangaroos' day out in Hobart. Hardly. North Melbourne were roundly beaten by GWS in Sydney. Not surprisingly, ABC viewers were shocked and dismayed. And on the Shin Boners footy podcast, we found out why. It was round 16, 2019. 2019, they've pulled the tape from. <laughs> yep, ABC Hobart put to air a five-year-old sports report, something it fessed up to the following night. And we begin sport tonight with an apology for playing the wrong AFL story in last night's news. We played an old story with an identical title which was accidentally included in our bulletin. Whoops, as Big Chief joked on the Shin Boners podcast... How ridiculous is that? We'll just show any tape. Look, I'm hoping next week we might see the 99 grand final. Well, for everyone's sake, let us hope not. 
That's all from us for tonight. You can read a statement from Seven on our website. No show for us next Easter Monday, but do join us for Media Bytes on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. But for now until next time, goodbye.